Hello, hello, everybody. Rod, your your alternative personalities in the chat. I know. I, I I'm on the wrong account, so I need to do that. I should do that, and I could be here for both channels at the same time. Hey, there you go. We yeah, uh, yeah. listen, Biscuit Butt. You should, Archie. <laughs> you should know by now we can never be on time. Even if we're all here early, we're never on time. We just—I I don't know. It's a tradition. A I think if we were on time, people, people would worry if we were on time. So it is cold almost everywhere. So stay warm. I see comments in the chat about snow and four degrees, and you guys can keep that. But where I am in Florida tonight, we are getting in the twenties. So we are getting cold here as well. But happy Tuesday to everybody. I am Kat, the nurse flipper, joined by Rod, picking and punching. My co-host, Chris, down below me, New Jersey picker, has been on with us before. And then Caddy Corner is Alex, beard king picker, and it is his first time with us. So I'm going to make these two gentlemen big. The links to their channels are in the description. And... Marsha, you are by yourself. I hope you're here because Mark is not coming tonight. He called out sick. Not really. He has baseball and volleyball with his children. So it is okay. So Marsha, you are on your own. I don't know if Lisette is here and can help too. But here is Chris. Hey, everyone. Chris, New Jersey Picker. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, New Jersey Picker. And uh, I put out videos a couple times a week. I'm actually taking a two-week break right now, so I won't be back with new videos until the end of the month. And I have an eBay store. I've been doing it eBay full-time, well, full-time, part-time, full-time for about five years now. And I also am the admin for the uh, Trash to Cash podcast Facebook group over on Facebook, 30,000 strong. So come join that and hang out there with us as well. Perfect. Here is Alex. What's up, guys? My name is Alex, the Beard King Picker, not to be confused with any other bearded resellers. I am the king of the bearded resellers. Uh, I sell on eBay and Amazon. I am a full-time uh, reseller and also do YouTube and all social media at the Beard King Picker. You can find me and also am on the Reseller Locker Room podcast every Thursday morning. Perfect. Is that live? Uh, it is not live. Sometimes we go live like on Fridays every once in a while, but usually okay. just drops in the morning like at nine on Thursday. That works. All right. Let's see what we got in the qu get the questions in early, guys. Last week we ended with 34 questions unanswered. So please, please get them in early if you want us to be able to get to them. Cause as much as we try, we can't get to them all every week. All right. First question is for Chris. Uh, Old Things New said they're about 15 miles from the shore in South Jersey, close to Ocean City. Are you anywhere near where they are? No, uh, I am on the uh, western part of New Jersey, very close to the Pennsylvania border, um, very close to where Rod grew up uh, in a was a, a Hellertown, right? You grew up in yeah, Rod? Up Rod down, yeah, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, yeah. Lehigh Valley, Allentown, Bethlehem, Hellertown area. Yeah, I always say that I'm the New Jersey picker, but I probably should have made myself the Lehigh Valley picker because I pick over there more than I actually do in Jersey. I like sourcing in Pennsylvania. Sourcing oh, in Pennsylvania is beautiful. My, my is dad great. had a you know a hauling business growing up, and like the crazy things that you find in Pennsylvania. I mean, it's where the, the birth of the United States was pretty much, so there's tons of great yes. picking. If you guys have an opportunity, anyone in the in the chat here, let us know if you ever picked through Pennsylvania or how area. Those areas are absolutely great to pick through. Let us know if you find anything good. Beverly, I wish I was in Oahu. I would gladly meet up and go picking with you on the island. I have been yeah. watching Hawaii life and that is like dangerous, like showing like people picking houses in Hawaii. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> It's probably not in the negatives right now over there, uh, right? No. It probably is not. The keys are <laughs> like nice. that too. But I was reading that the homeowner's insurance in Hawaii is not as expensive as it is in, in, in Florida? like Florida. Our our insurance is more than our mortgage. Mine is. Um, uh -huh. And down in the keys, I bet it's probably double what people, I don't know, the houses are expensive. So it's probably about the same. But Hawaii, it looked like, is not that expensive. But I think it's really expensive to live there. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, cost of living anyway. is 
I'm not moving to Hawaii. Maybe the Virgin Islands. I don't know. I'm, I'm crazy. Okay, Patty, next week I'll be in the Virgin Islands and nobody will know what's going on. Uh, Patty <laughs> wants to know if anybody uses the eBay MasterCard. And you guys can answer in the chat too, because I don't know if any of us on the panel do this. Um, and she mm -hmm. wants to know if it gives reward points for buying the shipping labels. That's a good question. Yeah, I do not. I, I don't either. I don't use that one. I actually have American Express Business one, which I use... I get all my um, all my points through Hilton, and so when I go picking for traveling, go to different events, is the best thing possible for a picker who wants to travel. So I highly recommend it. If you have a business account or LLC, send me a message. I can send you a link. You get like twenty thousand points for signing up. So and I get I get I get points too if you sign up. But it's well worth. I it. can hook you up with a Chase business card too. I can give you a link too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys want, if you guys don't have, I'm being dead serious. So if you guys don't have a rewards card for your your business on eBay, you can actually instead of doing it through your payout, you can switch it to PayPal. Put your credit card on PayPal. So that's just free. That's free money, free points for you guys because you, your buyers are paying you for the shipping labels, and you just put it on your credit card, and literally you make that payment every Tuesday when you get your money, and literally just pay off your credit card. So yeah, huh. yeah, we um we get quite a few points on our business one as well. I like, I didn't start my business one until about a year and a half ago. And I really wish I had before because typically it's several hundred dollars we earn every month. I use it to like pay off the cell phone bill or, you know, whatever, but it's, it, it really adds up when you use it for like everything business yeah. goes on my business card and it's easier to track too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's easy to track. And the cool thing with the American Express one, you can actually, take pictures of your receipts and upload them to, to your, uh, so you actually, if you're like out and about, take a picture, upload it right to the actual app. So you don't have to worry about your receipts and stuff, which is cool. But, and then they also get bonuses. Like if you spend $15,000, you get a free night and weekend, which you can use pretty much like a four or five star hotel. So when me and my wife last year went to Europe for our honeymoon, we literally had free hotels all through Barcelona, all through Florence, Italy, all through Rome. So we literally wow. stayed like a five star hotel on Easter weekend in Rome, which was amazing for free so it was awesome i highly recommend it i can't can't talk enough about it man yeah yeah i agree miss eileen wants to know if any of us have had stuff relisted by ebay after it sold she said it ha happened to her a few times and she caught it today that that happened yeah. again this seems like a new thing that's going on right now so my buddy uh Sodi city flips just put out a video about this I personally don't, it hasn't happened to me, but I know he had like 27 or something. Wow. So I don't know if this is, you know, a new glitch going on on eBay or what? I've had it happen for years. Um, really? Just, I've sold things and then six months, nine months, a year later, I'll have another sale for it. And just mysteriously, an item gets relisted. Um, I don't know why. I've called eBay and talked about it. They don't know why. Uh, they say some of the times that I must have put the quantity as two, and I know that I didn't, yeah. um, you know, but yeah, it's just one of those glitches out there. And if, I, if it happens a lot, definitely contact eBay. Uh, you can use the uh, eBay, cat. I know you know what, the eBay Facebook group, and you can contact eBay, eBay for that business. Way. Yeah, eBay, eBay for yeah, eBay for business on Facebook, yes. Has that happened to you, Alex, at all? No. So as you guys know, we, we talked about this multiple times on the show here, but I have a video game Red Dead Redemption for PS4 that's been relisted and sold by eBay about probably three or four times in the last like six months. Wow. It just keeps Crazy. yeah. I keep thinking I have it because I always pick up multiple copies of it and I don't have it, but <laughs> it's just it's a glitch. Um unfortunately, there's not much you can really do about it. If it does, like like um Chris just said, if it happened a lot, contact eBay. Because you don't want to get dings against your account for keep canceling items, and uh, but I, I just let the buyers know, hey, it was a glitch. Um, if you want me to cancel it, I can cancel it. Or would you like something else in my store? You want the buyer to send you an email saying that just cancel it because then you have proof on there that the buyer requests to cancel it, and then yeah. that you that, that covers your backside, and you don't have to worry about you know dinging say out of stock or anything like that. Now is it is it affecting your account though? Since it's happened multiple times with that video game. No, it's not affecting my account because every time I do it, I the way I cancel it, I cancel it. So it says the buyer requests to cancel because I email the buyer and ask them they want something else. Okay. But if if you did it, if you would say out of stock or like you didn't have the item, 
you get enough of those, it will ding your account. So that's that's like the oh, yeah. eBay hack to work around it. Oh, yeah, so that's you, a good you, tip you, there. To cover yourself. Oh, I know that happened too, right? Yeah, well, I actually, I always, I have had it happen. I'll search to drop ship it first if I can find it cheaper than what I sold it for. And a lot of times I can. So I actually end up still making money drop shipping it. Um, but I do like Rod said and ask them, you know, do they want me to cancel it or offer them something else in the store? And then if they say cancel, I'm kind of covered and good to go. But I definitely have had it happen for Maybe sure. It Maybe it has happened to me, and I just think that I lost the item. And I totally forgot that I sold it before. <laughs> well, yeah, it's hard true. having, like, we have 6,000 items. Yeah. So for us, it totally could, or it could be, you know, like, something where it's, I thought it sold, yeah. or I had something similar. Like Rod saying he picked up multiple copies, like... I'll, I picked up the same thing, you know, at different time points and think I still have it. And then I don't. And what sucks is it's stuff that I accept offers on or send offers on because I think I have it. Yeah. And then there people are like, why did you send me an offer when you that's, don't want well, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the worst. Yeah, that's how mine gets sold, too. I'm like, ah, you know, yeah, it's like, man, it sucks. All right. Ooh, the lolly. She just created a second channel. So she wants to know how do you switch the account when you're live chatting? It keeps sweat switching. It's up in the right hand corner where you click your picture. It says switch account. She's talking about YouTube channels, yeah. guys. Okay. Um, and you can switch in between them. Like I have this one, I have catch treasure hunting. And then I have like just my name, which has nothing. So. Yeah. If you notice earlier, I, I was on my flipping and punching channel. I had a quick switch back to my picking and punching, but yeah, it's a real easy switch. But I, I will tell you this though: make sure the rule of thumb, if you if you're a YouTuber, and have two channels. When you go to upload a video, make sure you're signed into the right account. Yeah. Because, have, have you done that? Posted the wrong video on the wrong channel and had to quick take it down and redo it. I have not. But I have posted on the wrong community feed something oh, okay. before. And yeah. then I'm like, well, crap. Yep. Yeah, so I have done that. But not not a video. Not yet. Knock on wood. It definitely could happen. I usually catch All it before right. it drops. But... Well, I normally schedule them for like five or ten minutes, like the first 15 or 30 minute time slot after I upload. So I don't yep. have much time to... <laughs> I have uploaded the wrong video. I edited and uploaded the wrong video <laughs> and made the title and thumbnail for the video that was the next one. And it was so funny because a lot of people had watched and commented. And then one person finally is like, Kat, I, I don't think this is the right video for this title. And I was like, oh, crap. There is Julian, the other, the bearded thrift that lived here for two years with me. <laughs> you have, you and I Alex see that. Have a beard off. Julian, there's Alex. You have a beard well, off. I see a question coming up that's talking about if I'm going to be dethroned in the I beard saw, category here. And now I see the bearded thrift machines in here. So, <laughs> there's, hey, there, there's some good beards in the reselling community. There's a lot sure. of beards. My husband fits right in. My husband's beard looks like yours, Alex. He fits like right in, in with it. In the chat, awesome. let us know who has the best beard in the reselling community. I'm oh interested gosh, now. that's a loaded question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's get this let's get this chat going tonight. All right. <laughs> he wins. All right. <laughs> I know, right. All right. Kelly said she had a vintage into Inuit carving that was flagged and removed for animal policy violations. The same material by the same artist have stayed up. Should I try to relist it differently or what? Does anybody besides me know what this is or should I answer this question? I know what it is, but I you can take the, the answer to the question because I mean, I, I, I personally would not try to put it back up because you've already been flagged once, but I'm not sure oh. if you have a different answer for that, Kat. It depends on how you word it with a lot of this stuff because like the scrimshaw carvings a lot, um, it depends on what's on it. Like I've had stuff with like a bear paw carved on it and it got taken down because eBay thought it was a bear paw. So if it's something like that, I would put it up, but I would watch your wording. Now, if they are actually flagging it for what it is, it doesn't matter if there are other ones up. If that is the case and you put it back up, then you 
are risking losing your account. So I would say be sure you know why they are flagging it. If it was a, a like a letter or a word in there or what it was, see, they, they're, they got to say that he's staring at them right in their <laughs> eyes. No. <laughs> so Kat, you're not, I mean, you would actually re-listen on it if you knew the reason why, if you didn't know the reason why, would you still re-list it to maybe reward it though? There, there's a, well, there's I a, would want to know question. the reason. I would try and figure okay. out what in my title had caused them to flag it for an yeah. animal policy. If it, because if it is like, if it's carved from like, certain things i don't know mm. if she's put in here what it what it is carved of because this is, it was kind of a vague question um what is an animal policy violation i mean can't you sell taxidermy on ebay well okay. so it's just a carve like a lot of times it's whalebone they'll carve oh, walrus mm. tusks they yeah, will okay. they will carve um and a lot of that is okay and it's allowed so that's why I'm saying I would I would want to I would want to figure out why. And yeah. if it was just because of what it is, then I would. Yes, you have to be very careful with with ivory because ivory is illegal to sell unless yeah. you can prove you bought it before the 1950s, which is not easy to do. Um, ivory is 110 percent illegal. If it is ivory in any way, shape or form, that cannot go back up. But. Be yeah. careful with that. Throw, just throw it on Bonanza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but everything removes more Bonanza. items than any other platform that I sell on. Because oh, really? Have, uh, because it's through Google, and they they post a lot of stuff on Google, uh -huh. so it gets flagged. So they will automatically you list on eBay, and then it automatically cross lists to uh, Bonanza for you. And I get notifications probably weekly. How about you, Kat? You probably have probably got a ton removed. You probably don't even realize it. It comes to your email to say that we removed fifty seven items from your bonanza store today you don't get in trouble i don't, or anything. Read, yeah. I don't read it i, I would read. definitely not catch that time. because i have forty two thousand unread emails so <laughs> i don't read yeah. emails at all i have one my my gmail i do not read at all <laughs> Look, I just don't. all right easy pickens wants to know as far as taxes go are you using the inventory method or are you using cash in and cash out and full disclaimer here before we answer this question no one we here are is not in an accountant account. And we are not giving accounting advice. We're just letting you know what we do. And I was going to say, if you don't have an accountant, you probably should get one. When I first started, I've had an accountant my pretty much almost my entire adult life. And when I started doing this, I asked her, what would you like me to do? And she said, just keep a list of what you are buying. Um, it doesn't have to be specific. If you go to a yard sale and spend 60 bucks, put yard sale, $60, you're good. So I guess that's sort of like the cash in, cash out kind your of money system. in, money out. Yep. Yeah. yeah. She's perfectly fine with that. But some accountants I know, I've talked to other people, they want a detailed list. So, you know, it really depends on who's doing your taxes and um, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'll let Alex go now. <laughs> Alex? Oh, I just do cash in, cash out. I'm sorry. I was. No, you yeah, just far, cash in, yeah. cash out as far as taxes go. Yeah, I think it's really going to come down to your system and what works best for you. But I would say always talk to an accountant first because when you are getting started, it can cause a lot of issues later on down the line. If you plus if you expand to grow and everything else, because if you're doing your inventory system, there's like you have to set up a, a whole system for that. And if you're doing cash in, cash out, it's gonna be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But as you get bigger, as Kat, like Cat's accountant, you, you, I'll let Cat take this one. But your accountant says that you should be doing the inventory instead of the cash in, cash no, out. No, no, Mark too. Oh, Mark, Mark did that. Two, Mark, not okay, your dad, yeah. CPA. Yeah. My accountant says inventory or cash in, cash out because yeah, that's yeah. the easiest for me and for him. But yeah. Mark too yeah. says if you're growing and you expect it to get bigger and bigger, because you will know more about your business and your numbers if you do inventory system. Okay. Um, why don't you drop that? What is the the link that you uh for the for the people? Oh, I'll take find it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mark two is only providing his course in January this month, guys. He yeah. is cutting it off for the rest of the year. Um, this is the first year he has ever done that. I'm getting the link now. Um, I think I have a coupon. Um, I know somebody used it the other day because I got a notification. So I think my link is still good. I, well, I'm going to find another. I think Mark so, sent me a new one. I'm so bad about that. 
Yeah, so here's the thing. Even if you are experienced and you do have an accountant, stuff like that, it's still good to have good knowledge on this. Mark specializes in dealing with, with resellers, and he'll give you great information, kind of tips and tricks for your business. So keep that in mind. We get a lot of tax questions on here. And then, you know, there's also other things, other systems you can use for yourself. Like we had reselling um, Genie on last week. Yeah. Um, and they're great too. I mean, their software is great, um, but that's not going to be more the accountant side. That's more just to, you know, for oh, you to be able is. to balance your books and, and be able to, you know, keep track of things. Oh, this link says I cannot use it until January 23rd. So I will not. Hold on. I will find <laughs> another one. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait. Okay, so you can get a $50 discount. I'm putting this in the chat now. Um, code the Nurse Flipper, just like it is for everything else, all capitals. I just put the link. You can, If you use code the Nurse Flipper, you'll get $50 off of his course. Um, it is, I believe, $350. It is well worth it. I That's the only way I know enough to talk to you with half a sense of understanding of inventory versus money in, money out. Be, and and like I said, I did his course, and by what he said, I should be doing inventory. But six thousand items in would be a very very difficult um, change. So I'm just going to keep doing what my accountant says. But his course is very in depth for reseller taxes, and I think me, even though I use an accountant, just taking the course, I was just so much more knowledgeable and knew what to ask my accountant. And it just, I, the more, the more, you know, I think the better it, it is 110% worth it. The time it is like well over 40 hours. So like what you would pay at a college or something. And it's specifically for resellers. It goes into like, when should you get your LLC? When should you go into S Corp? Like it is so in depth. Any question you guys ask us on here is in that course and i took it myself so i i can tell you from taking it so w one thing i like to just add to that too is i mean yes i know that can be expensive and we're not saying you guys have to do that but any tools that we bring up on this podcast are very beneficial to you and they do cost money sometimes if it's photo room or if it's you know a, a, a printer or whatever we're saying is but don't step over hundred dollar bills to pick up pennies you know because yes we can cut cut costs and to do these things, but at the same point in time, you'd be costing yourself a lot of money in the long run by not knowing certain yeah. things or not using. Like I pay my tools. accountant almost four hundred a month, yeah. guys. Four hundred a month, but I, it's worth it. I if I get audited, I have insurance through my accountant. He is through who is filing everything, and we did gross please keep in mind it is gross close to a half a million dollars in income last year so i'm more than happy to pay 400 dollars a month for that peace of mind if nothing else uh cost cash in cash out you account for the inventory you buy when you buy it and then you account for it when it's sold um and then th the fees and the postage is your expenses that's not as far as money in, money out. Money in, money out is just what you buy, what you sell. And then the rest of it's all other stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Julian got himself one too. I think right before right before he jumped ship, Julian got an accountant regularly as well. It, it And I wouldn't recommend it. It like I started when I was making 2000 a month because I'm horrible at accounting stuff. And I just felt like that was what I needed to do. It was not as expensive as it is now, but you have to remember, and if you didn't watch my multiple streams of income video, I have income coming from all over the place and it's pretty complicated. I think I end up with like 20 tax forms at the, at like that are coming in right now. I get and a lot. I want to be clear too. I mean, you're the extreme part in reselling where you're having all these different, you know, come well, in. Yeah. And I've got YouTube, I've got eBay, yeah. I've got whatnot. I've got, I don't Macari, even, I don't even got, know what I've yeah, got. You, know, you have a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. And what a lot of people don't realize is you don't have to pay a monthly fee for your account and you can get an account. No, but do it annually. Like yeah. use my reseller genie 10 to 20 bucks a month or yeah, QuickBooks, whatever you want to use. Yeah, you could be your own bookkeeper and then at the end of the year pay an accountant like a couple hundred bucks to do your do your taxes. So there's there's multiple ways to do yeah. this. We're not telling you that you have to pay someone every single month to do this. 
you can take, you know, keep track of all your stuff, but it's just good to have someone because they are an expert and they will save you money in the long run or, you know, give you deductions that you maybe didn't know about. So, yeah, yeah, at least that for that filing, I would do that. I also, mine files like my quarterly um, sales tax because if you have a reseller certificate, you have to file quarterly sales tax in Florida. So mine does that, even though it's zero because all the platforms collect it for me. If you don't file that zero, they charge you a $50 late fee. Just FYI. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. All right. Lala says I'd like to make a, a what? A what? I, does that mean sold? sold? I think she Probably. means sold. A what would? That that should be the name of it, Lala. What would? <laughs> um, I'm assuming what sold. So how do you share your screen? So for any of us, if we share screen, we can let her know how we do it. So if she's doing it live, um, YouTube has a feature to do that, I'm pretty sure. I don't do YouTube lives, uh, so anyone who does those would know better than me. Uh, but I know like if I, I've done very, very few of the what sold videos, uh, but I just use a, a screen capture uh, service. I use uh, uh, Streamlabs, yeah, which is sort of like StreamYard. I just use Streamlabs to do a screen capture, and you can set it up on your computer. It's they have tons of YouTube videos. That's how I learned to watch and tutorial yourself how to get through it, and it's uh, it's free to use. So I have a free one to use. So yeah, I have no idea how to do it. So I hold my phone, and then I got my camera here, and I <laughs> zoom in on the eBay holds off my camera off my phone. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I just take screenshots of what I do, uh, what I sell, and then post my my pictures up on my videos when I do mine. So here you go, my friends. So Streamyard is free, which is what we are broadcasting on right now, and you can share your screen with Streamyard which is what I'm doing now. This is how I've started my what sold. And I can like, if I'm on here, I can plus this in and bring it in, like make my uh, font bigger so that people can see it better. So if you go to StreamYard, it's completely free and you just hit share screen and you can hop around as you like. That's how I do my research videos too. I was doing screenshots, but the time amount spent for popping screenshots up on screen compared to if I do it and I don't go live to do it. I record it in StreamYard and then I edit it. I download it and edit it. It is so much easier than popping screenshots up on the screen. So much easier for long, long form content. Now, short, short form would be a little bit different. Susan would like to know, she thought anything 12 by 12 by 12 and under is all priced the same for the same weight. When I get quotes for 18 by 14 by six, the pricing is higher. Yeah, so as far as I know at USPS, um, once you get to a certain length in the box, they're going to start charging you more. And it could be 18 inches. Um, I usually, uh, I usually the highest box that I actually have in stock right now is a 16 by 16 by eight by six. That's the biggest one. And then if I need to put something bigger in it, I just Frankenstein them together. And yes, once you get over a certain height, the price will go up. Um, but yeah, if you're in a 12 by 12 by 12, it's a smaller box for your, for them to take. So that doesn't take up a lot in their, their truck. So they're there. Or if you bring it to their post office directly, they're not going to charge you as much for that shipping. So the, the longer, more oblong boxes definitely have a higher price tag associated with them. Yeah, I'm going to pass on this. I don't know. I sell books. <laughs> They're all going in a poly bag or, or a teeny box. So I don't sound like that big. Yeah, I think Chris hit, hit the nail on the head. Unless Kat has anything to add to that. I think this is something new because I've noticed this as well. And I don't know what it is. So maybe well, if somebody knows, because it was like 21 inches, I think, or 22. So the 18 should not flag that. But I have noticed that as well, that it's, I wonder if eBay is now charging us cubically versus by weight. I mean, a lot of the big companies do get a discount for five pounds for five pounds and under if it's cubic. Like cubic stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 12 by 12 by 12. Same thing with whatnot. Whatnot will give a special shipping rate. So that's why you see a lot of people and whatnot 
and especially like what if I do my if you ever been in like my uh, storage unit blowouts when I do, but we charge a max shipping of eight dollars and thirty five cents. We pay anything over that, but because if I ship them in one pound or four pounds or five pounds, priority mail twelve by twelve by twelve is going to be the same same price. Uh -huh. not. we found yeah. it out. Okay, so here's what it is. I obviously wasn't good at math really fast in my head. Marsha is. 18 plus 14 plus seven, because that six and a half is rounded up is 39 and you are going over the 12 by 12 by 12. But I don't, I don't, I have not noticed $4 surcharges for 18 inch. It's, it's when they changed it uh, last year, they changed it. That's why people don't, that's why people ship their golf clubs now, their baseball bats, their posters. But that's UTS. over 21, I think. Julian, are you still here? Cause he does, like he yeah, knew those. Right measurement yeah like a lot yeah um i'm googling real quick 18 it, okay hold on understanding new usps fees blah 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 it says a dollar 50 will be applied to any packages that have a length greater than 22 inches and those suckers if you give them the incorrect dimensions they are going to charge you a non-compliant fee of 25 cents, those little suckers. Um, this is on Shippo. Okay, parcels that exceed 30 inches in length are a $15 surcharge. So that's where the golf clubs were getting hit really hard with that $15 surcharge. Um, so the 18 should not, as long as the other two don't make it add up to over 36. So I think we figured it out. There we go. The mystery has been solved. There we go. Yes, that's what I just read. Yes, it was because it was rounding up that measurement. Question for Alex. Do you think you're, Alex already read this, so he knows, but now he has the answer. <laughs> they want to know if you're going to be dethroned ever. Hey, I already secured the name Beard King. Picker, so unless someone wants to buy my channel, which I'm open, you can send me DMs at Instagram. We could talk, but I already got the crown, guys. So I don't I know if anyone else wants to weigh in on I this. Could buy their name. Do you think a random person, if you message and ask them to buy your name, would think you were crazy? No. And she, maybe she's watching. If she is, she knows who she is. I, I need I want to start something else. I'm not gonna say what it is, but somebody has like the most amazing name. If you're in the chat, you can say who you are if you feel comfortable. And I commented and told her I need her name. I told her already. Like I want her. She's not on you, she watches me on YouTube, but I think she just does social media on Instagram. And I but if I get a name, I need it everywhere. So and I love her name. So if she's in here, she can yeah. tell us. All right. Trashy Panda, Rod, they want to know if you would, how would you lot a bunch of 90s era comics? Would you do it by number or by story arc? So usually a couple of different ways. One is by publisher. If it's Marvel, DC, Image, or Independent, you can lot those together because there's people that collect specifically for Marvel or specifically for DC. Um, then if you want to break it down to a subculture in that, realm i would like if it was like marvel if i had spider-man books or punisher books or x-men books i would put those separate if you had and then put those in a number run because people do buy runs um and a lot of people are looking for filler books for their collections so there's a lot of there's two different types of collectors one that just collect keys like the main main books that's a minor or major event in a comic book first appearance you know a death of somebody a major event and then you have your filler books, which are going to be but people just like to make putting together a set of cards or something like that. So they're, just, they're trying to go in order, get those, those, those numbers. So a lot of times people may collect from certain eras, like for example, like the silver age from, you know, late sixties, early seventies. Then you had the bronze age, seventies and the early eighties, copper age in the eighties into the nineties there. So I always put them in my runs and then I try to put them in. in so I'm breaking down Marvel by the, by the book and then by runs in that. That's how I, I normally sell mine on eBay, and that does really well. So for somebody who doesn't know about comics, like me, and probably a lot of people in chat, if you got a lot of comics, do you recommend comping every single book? No. So the trick would be is there's an app called Key Collector. 
I highly recommend if anyone here is a reseller and you come across comic books, download. It is free to download. And what it does is you can actually search by, like, say, say Amazing Spider-Man Run has 800 books in it. You can actually search Amazing Spider-Man, and we'll actually just show you the the numbers on there that are actually worth money, the key books, and that's all you would need to do. So when I get runs of comics, that's how I learned. I just had that app, so when I was out places, and you can see, like, they might show the, you know, comic 301 to, you know, and then the next one's not, not going to be good until, like, 350. Well, anything in between there, I'm just going to toss to the side and put it in a pile. So that, that's okay. kind of the best thing to do, but it's a good reference. Because it shows you pictures and it tells you, and you have a link goes directly to eBay for you. So key collector, and there's a news report on there that will let you know updates of movies and TV shows and books that get optioned. So, or graphic novels or just regular books or anything in, in Hollywood. So I get a lot of news on there. So I know like a year or two before a movie's coming out, like the Pink Panther's coming out down the line. They're going to be doing a Snoopy movie. They're doing all these things down the line people just don't even know about the comic can you tell called, them the name yeah key collector is the is key a comic collector app. like a house key yep key collector right here thank you chris right there key collector app and it yeah it looks like like a big superhero on the front of it let me see if i can pull it up but i'll, I'll go to the app store i'll pull it up and i'll show you guys here in a second but you can go to the next question i pull it up okie doke kelly yeah. wants to know have we or would we ever attempt to restore an item like a gold leaf on a piece of vintage china or broken folk art? Would you ever try to fix something like that? Key collector, guys. That's what it looks like. Download Here, to I'm going to make him big for a second and then we'll answer. Yeah. So people Key collector. can see. Yeah. Well, I'm right definitely going to download that. I yeah, it, that. it's worth its weight in gold. And I pay like I pay 20 bucks a year for it and I get like the cool. upgraded version of it. And you get like the news like come out immediately, you get notifications. Like it's yeah. well worth his weight in gold. It's like it's like two bucks a month if you want to pay I got for the a, upgrade. I got a ton of comic books I need to go through. So uh, it, it, it will make your your life so much easier. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yep. Chris, have um, you ever tried to fix anything, or would you? So yeah, so not like gold leaf on vintage china or broken folk art, but I do a lot of electronics, and I've had a lot of corrosion that I've you know, attempted to restore and it's hit or miss. Um, corrosion is not easy to get off of something. If you had like batteries that had exploded in something, you get that corrosion. Um, it's a time consuming process. So unless something has a real good value to it, you know, you've probably heard Tarot say it before time is money. So, you know, you know, if you're going to put a half hour or an hour into something, is it really worth it to restore it? If it's only a $20 item, probably not, you know, but for some of those bigger items, I have tried it and had moderate success, but um, I know nothing about trying. I stay away from breakable stuff because I'm klutzy and I would just break everything. So I don't usually ship a lot of that stuff. Yeah. I haven't tried to restore anything, but it is a gold mine to get into book uh, restoring and fixing bindings and stuff like that, because I come across a lot of books from the 1800s and Bibles like that, that I know if I took the time to fix, you know, what, what needs to be restored on there, it would up the price, you know, tremendously on old books. So this is a good debate, you know, with this. And I always like to say is I'm buying profits, not projects a lot of times. And, you know, I will fix things up, but it has to be worth my, my time. You know, if I'm, if I buy an item and I got to put an hour into that, I mean, I, if it's going to increase my, my profits by 20 or 30 bucks, it's not going to be worth it, you know, where I could be listing for that hour and, you know, listing hundreds of dollars of stuff. But if I can restore something or fix something and it's going to increase my profit by a hundred, two hundred dollars, then it's kind of worth your time. So that's the yeah. biggest thing. I think that's a, that's a struggle that a lot of people go through. Now, if it's, if it's something that you're passionate about, do it. I mean, if it makes you happy, 100%. We, we, everyone on this panel probably sell things that we enjoy selling that we know we can sell other things and make more money on, but we enjoy this and that's why we yeah. choose to do this. So sometimes I'd rather take, you know, sell it at a, at a discount where someone else could actually restore it and do it just because, mm -hmm. you know, I, my time is more valuable doing other things. But I mean, I have fixed things up in the past. I clean up a lot of video game systems, take them apart or, or do stuff. But, you know, if I'm getting super cheap, I can make an extra 75 bucks, 100 bucks by doing that. So it's just really going to vary based on the item. Right. Restoring yeah. books could be its own business in itself, though, too, yeah. for me. You know, if I, yeah, if I learn how to do sure. that. So. Yeah, I um, 
I typically, I'm like Rod, I don't, I don't restore. If I buy something that I know has a, a chip or crack, I am probably going to list it and disclose that. I saw a couple people say that in the chat because it still will sell. You do have to make sure the value is there, not broken. If you want to pick up something that has flaws, like it needs to have pretty good value without flaws in order for me to pick it up flawed. Uh, I will say... I buy a lot from online estate auctions. I love Kachinas and they typically sell 50 to a hundred bucks. And a lot of times they get to me broken and I've come to expect that, but I cannot find Kachinas in Florida. Not a lot. I find a few, I find a few, but the majority of them I have to buy from the Southwest, which means they have to be shipped, which means I expect breakage and, we and it's funny because my employee Prissy has now she she just she repairs them so she's learned how I if you my live shipping today I was trying to glue one back together and we had disclosed the issue and I was just trying to fix it for them and I hit that thing like three times live on camera like I'm like never mind like I just gave up and wrapped it up but they're just super fragile and yeah so. We're, we're, that, that's the main thing we fixed. I also got paintings on slate that are sort of valuable and I fixed those and I did sell one for over a hundred dollars with the damage disclosed. I didn't buy it damaged. It arrived, same thing. I bought it shipped. It was a native American painting on slate and I fixed it. So that was like a puzzle. It was like four pieces. Luckily it wasn't shattered. But like if it's 20, 30, 40 dollars, I'm I'm not gonna waste my time on it. It's just not worth it. That's like people who love doing like Ken Hustleby. Like Ken loves cleaning shoes. Like you couldn't pay me to clean shoes. Yeah, well, maybe. You'd have to pay me an awful lot. Um I mean, but if I spend a couple minutes cleaning your shoe, I don't mind doing that, but I'm not going to sit there. Like like Derek uh, have you seen his me. shorts? He's like got all his Man. tools. Yeah, he's like, he loves it, he lo but he loves it. He loves that's shoes, so, you know. I get, I go over with baby wipes real quick and wipe what I can yeah. off in like that's a second, me. and that's I'm about not, it. Like, yeah. we use wipes. I don't know. Look, see my purple. I got some that smell like lavender, and they make me happy. Do you see them? That's like. And then Keep. since we're on the topic, I was telling Gorilla Glue is going to be a reseller's best friend. By the way, it can. Oh my glue is right glue there. Back. Yeah, Gorilla glue, glue is there. Yep, wipes are there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, big, uh, so. big disclosure for Gorilla, Gorilla Glue, though. If you do buy it, make sure that you wear gloves with it because it yes. will stick to everything, yeah. and it's uh, it's toxic to your skin. So you don't yeah. like it. Uh, and don't get it in your beard. It's <laughs> a disaster. All right. Miss Brenda said, we have only had an eBay store for two weeks. So if you bought, uh, if you have a nice pair of boots with no size, how do you handle that? Uh, I know that there are websites where you can go to measure the bottom of a shoe, I think, and the width of a shoe to find the actual size for it. And um, I don't know what that website is called, uh, but I don't typically like to buy shoes. Uh, and I usually buy them if they're brand new or look brand new. And I know I can flip them for a profit. Yeah, If it doesn't have the size on it, I'm probably going to pass on it. So that website that Chris is talking about is called YouTube. And if you guys <laughs> don't know, I was... Never I would say, anytime you need to answer anything for reselling, go on YouTube and just type it in. You're guaranteed to find videos on there, and it's going to do that. But I would say, yeah, I mean, if it's a nice pair of boots, I mean, I would maybe take the extra step to do that and just measure it. I mean, that's not going to take you a lot of time, but it's just something good to know. All right, just a PSA, whatnot is down. That is not new. <laughs> it happens <laughs> a lot. Yeah, um, Mary, but whatnot is down like, right like now. Seven times a day, I think, so. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I would say first, don't buy a pair of boots that doesn't have a size, no matter how nice they are. Second, I have done it and not caught that it didn't have a size because I got so excited about finding them. I have done it and I did ex exactly what Chris said, but I go for the brand. So I will search for the brand and the measurements of their sizes because different brands have different measurements. But most of them you can find like the length of the shoe by the brand on Google. That's what I do. But I, I, if I notice, no matter how nice they are, if I notice I'm not picking them up because 
you really don't know like 110%, you know, like you can't know for sure. And then, yeah, then it turns into fun. Rocks to be me. Okay, we're going to go on a field trip. Okay, let's go on a field trip real quick. Because why not? With the lovely share screen feature here. All right, so if you go to your eBay seller hub, which is what we are on, if you scroll down to shortcuts, it says eBay shipping supplies, but that doesn't take you to your coupon. So if you go to manage your store under selling tools, I already use mine, by the way. Um, and then on the left, it says subscriber discounts, and you can rewind this if you need to see. So here is your eBay shipping supplies. You hit see details. And you can see I already use mine, but yours will be there if you haven't used it. And you can click start shopping and it will automatically apply it to your order. And it's good until the end of March. So it just rolled over the beginning of January, but I, I need it 16 by 12 by 8. So I and, went and ordered them. And a go rule of thumb is don't wait till the last week to, to use it because that's where majority of people do. They forget about it. And you have run the risk of certain items being sold out at that point in time or not in stock. So I highly recommend using it. They don't have eight by eights right now. I was mad. Yeah. I love the eight by eights. They're out right now. They're probably, they're probably recovering from Christmas to be honest with you still. Yeah. But. They, no, it's been intermittent over the years. They'll, they, they have them or not. I don't know if they have like a supply issue. Like I think half the time last year I couldn't get the eight by eights and I really like them. All right, Miss Linda says she's leery to offer returns on high value items that could be damaged easily or opening an item and validates it, such as mechanical, scientific, or mechanical instruments or fridge parts that are valued at 350 to 550. So, what do you say to that? I offer returns on everything that I sell. So, if someone wants to return something, it's the cost of doing business, I'll let them yeah. return it. Uh, same with me. Free returns. Well, not free returns, but take returns on anything. So, I mean, put yourself in, in, in their shoe. I mean, if you're going to buy a $1,500 item on there, wouldn't you want the reassurance knowing that you have an option to return that item if there's something wrong with it? Or, you know what I mean? And I, I will tell you, I get more returns on 10 and $20 BS stuff than I do on something that's $500 or $1,000 stuff. Because usually the high-end buyers are actually pretty cool about things. They know what they're getting themselves into. They're educated. They know. It's usually the, the quick ones that just don't read it and, and quick list it. So um, I, I would say one thing that I do for especially like high-end collectibles, like say if I sell like a, a vintage video game system that's brand new in the box, I will put on the listing, this is selling this as a, as a seal collectible in my listing. So if someone does open it up and the item doesn't work because it's 30 years old, it's, I'm selling it as a seal collectible. I'm not, you know, as a seal collectible or a collectible piece, not, you know, so they reopen, they open it. That's, you know, they're avoiding that. That's against, you know, what we're trying to sell at that point in time. So that's one way to kind of work around that system. Um, Cause there are people that just buy the items to put on display. Yeah. So for me, I, I will first say if somebody wants a return on eBay and they are eBay savvy, they are going to open a return on you no matter what you say. Um, that is the first thing. And I also do free returns on everything. I like to think the majority of people, and in my experience, the majority of people are good people. There are not like an abundant amount of scammers out there. Now, if you offer free returns, then you can deduct up to 50% and you can petition eBay for the other 50%. So say it was a fridge part that was sealed you get it back unsealed and it's an old one, you can automatically deduct 50% from that. And then you can petition eBay to give you the other 50% back by showing them proof. And so you could theoretically get your hundred dollars or a hundred percent back is what I'm trying to say. Um, now be careful with medical equipment because a lot of it is not allowed on eBay. Ask me how I know I was banned for three days for uh -oh. selling. So some CPAP masks can be sold, but CPAP nose things cannot. Again, ask me how I know, and you don't need a prescription for them. They are not a prescription thing. Um, but I was, I was kicked off for a few days for that. So I am going to, I'm going to start this by saying, 
that I'm the wife of someone with a beard and that if he shaved it, I would not like him very much. I love him, but I would not like him very much. I've seen him without his beard on his face and I much prefer him with his beard. And Alex's face when this popped up didn't look like he really agreed to this. Um, Shane, so the text said, if everyone subscribed to me that's in the chat, then I would shave my beard. That's what it said. <laughs> are, are you single? Me? Yeah. No. I'm not asking about her anything. Oh, okay. okay, well, then no. I think you should ask her permission before you commit no, no, no. to it, because I would be madder than it is listen. Not, oh, it is not up to my wife. So three years ago, my daughter asked me to grow my beard back. So for her birthday, I grew this beard. And I will never cut my beard unless my daughter asked me to. But she, anytime oh, I even joke awesome. about, oh, joke about cutting iPhone. it. You have a new do iPhone. Tell do this. Well, Go like this. Do this. Yeah. Yeah. I, said, I didn't know you could do the fireworks. I knew the we thumbs up and the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know the Wait, can you do balloons too or something? Yeah, yeah. We how do you so, do the balloons? How are the balloons? I forget. Uh, I didn't know Somebody that. tell us. We spent way too much. I'm like so red because we spent way too much time last week figuring this out. No, I think, this, I think we the wax on, wax off. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. But we had my reseller genie on last week and she was just talking and with her hand. She did and something and then the fireworks and hearts yeah. and balloons. <laughs> We're like, yeah. what the hell is going on? <laughs> That's funny. And the chat told us that was what we learned last week. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. You did it for your daughter. My son probably would not recognize my husband without a beard because my husband has never not had a beard since my son was born. He would probably yeah. be like, ah, like, who yeah. is this man? I've had a beard like on and off for like 10 years, so. See, I was the opposite. Yeah, he grew it, and then he said it got itchy, and then he cut it off, and I'm like, oh. And then I guess once it gets past the itchy phase, now he's like, whatever. But I, and some of you know this, some of you don't. My husband is 10 years younger than me, and when he shaves his beard, you can really tell the age difference (laughs) a lot more than if when he has his beard. Um, but he like has a baby. He looks his age when his beard's not there, but when his beard's there, it doesn't look like we're that far off in age. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm anyway. only really 21. So if I shave, then I'll look my age. <laughs> okay. So if he gets 386 subscribers, he is saying like now, like you have to all go right now. Check this. Then he's saying he will do I'm it. Ready. He's ready. <laughs> Alex, Alex, how many, how many subs are you away from a thousand? Oh, too many. <laughs> A lot. Like, honestly, how many, how many away? I'm only at like 350 oh, okay. subscribers or something. Yeah, I did YouTube yeah, for like a second and then took a four year break. So let me ask you <laughs> now I'm back. If we, can get you a certain, if we get you a certain number tonight, would you be able to cut? Would you cut your beard? I would be so sad to be a part no. of this. Yeah, I would be sad. I, like I, I just it'd break my daughter's heart. Okay. Uh, that's a good answer. I, I I'll, be I'll part trim, of this I'll either. trim the dead. I never trim anything. So I'll trim like. This much. <laughs> this much. I could be a part to that. I could be a part just, to trim. Just, I'll just even it out because I don't need to trim anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I am going to do my new whale here. You could have my. Oh, I should give him. Should I give him Rod? I'll give you Rod. Very good. You guys are watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time. Yeah. See, Jul- Julian's on board. Like, no. <laughs> it's just yeah you bearded guys all stick together when he did that i was like oh you sucker and, and like i was not a happy camper i mean i didn't like kick him out of the bed or anything but i wasn't happy i'll tell you that <laughs> all right yeah no but you have to be married to one you, you know, know it helps it, it helps a little bit though Help Have one in the family. So, somewhere there's got to be a beard, I feel like. Agreed. Somewhere. <laughs> she had a million subs. <laughs> um, yeah, you, maybe. Might, hey, you already got your 100K, buddy. You might, yeah. I mean, if I got to a million, I'd shave, I'd shave my head too. Yeah. Why I'll, not? If, Brad if would I get a thousand really right now, I'll shave my head. I'll do that. Right, he guys, would be super mad. Let's, let's help Alex out. Make sure you guys sub to Alex. Let's get him some subs tonight. Let's get him over 500. That's that's the goal. Let's get him over 500 tonight. You, you're at what? Three what? Three, 380 something? Yeah, let's 380 something is where he's at. Yeah, yeah let's get him over 500, guys. 
Dennis, right? This is Dennis. Is this Dennis? Yeah, yes. yeah. Dennis was on last week. Yep. Listen, I need like props because I'm getting old for remembering names. Um, what is <laughs> one thing <laughs> you will change in your reselling business this year? Wow, that's a that's a tough question. Um, I really want to re inventory my entire inventory because um, I started an inventory system about. 2000 items in so the last thousand items are inventoried and it's fabulous when I sell something because I know where it is but if it's one of those original 2000 that I just keep relisting sometimes I'm like I know exactly where it is and I'll go get it and it's not there and then time is money and you waste 40 minutes looking for a $10 item so that's definitely something I want to change and the other thing I'm definitely changing this year is I started going into clothing big time last year and I'm going even heavier this year because clothing has been phenomenal for me my biggest find ever was from clothing last year and i just want to have more of those huge clothing finds and they're so easy to list it's so easy to pack up and ship it's not breakable it's just boom couple of bags i i put, I put all the clothes into like um one of those clear plastic bags and then throw that into a poly mailer and done so easy yeah for me i need to focus back on amazon so I came from OA on Amazon and then I decided, you know, the end of this or 2023 to do eBay, but I need to find a focus where I can grow both at the same time. That's my biggest it is struggle. It's so hard. I tried yeah. and I ended up quitting Amazon um, because they're both big beasts. And I feel like when I was trying to do both, I was doing mediocre at both. Yeah, that's but my when problem. I dropped Amazon, I kicked up eBay. So I picked up cross posting to other platforms, but I never got back into Amazon. Yeah. Uh, it's, they're just, those are the, like the biggest beasts in the room, right? I feel like yeah. eBay and Amazon and I feel like they need like so much attention. I mean, to, yeah, especially OA is a lot of work when you're doing just online arbitrage. You know, it's a lot. Yeah. So. Well, Kat, just, I mean, look at you last year. I mean, you took a giant step back or just eBay and, and whatnot. You know what I mean? That was hard just to balance both of those. And now you're going back, you know, switching that too. So, I mean. Well, now going, I've switched it, but I mean, yeah. the, the money comes from where you put the energy, you know, and like we have, and we've held, we're actually at 51,000 for a 90 day total now on eBay. And it had dropped to like 19,000. It was for me, it was bad, but that was because I was focusing on whatnot. And now like whatnot is sad compared to what it was last year because I'm focusing on eBay more. Um, and whatnot's really more, I've gotten out of the habit of doing it. Um, I, I just need to, I, I feel like I need to do like two or three shows a week. I'm just trying to figure out a good schedule. I want to say, Chris, what I do, because I have those, or mine were like 500 items before I started marking them. When I see them pop up in my send offers to watchers, if I can't go and find them, I end the item. Because I'm like, well, if I sold it right now, I couldn't find it. And then I do the same thing if I'm doing like in and sell similar. If I can't find it, I, I take them down. And I, that, maybe one day when we go through everything again, we'll be able to <laughs> find them. Um, but I've been doing that cause I'm like, it's going to be an order I have to cancel. So if it pops up in my offer or I relist it, I just take them down. Um, all right, guys, get him to 500. There are plenty of you in here. There are yeah. almost hundred of you in here. We can get another hundred for sure. One thing yeah. I want to say Whoever is one subscribed, of, I, I super appreciate it. Guys. Appreciate it. One, one thing yeah. I would say is one of my favorite things to do with this show. And the reason why me and Kat do this is. We are stronger as a community than we are individually. And the whole purpose of us doing this is not only to you know, help people that come on the show, but help everybody in the community. So we help tons of people in the chat. So pay it for guys, sub to him. And then every time we get new people on, make sure you sub to them because they're taking time out of their day to come on the show and help give their point of view and stuff like that. And you know, it's a good way for us to pay them back for their, providing us with their knowledge. Yeah, and I think on here you see a, a lot of like how they're doing their business by how they're answering their questions. You can get a good feel of, you know, if it's somebody you're going to match with. Um, I know, and I'm not, do not ask me to say names. I will never. There are a couple people I cannot watch because I cannot listen to them because of their voice. Um, and that's just, it is what it is, right? Everybody can't like everybody else. But if you see they're on here, you see their knowledge, you like them, subscribe to them, watch them. 
and yeah, look, 408. Whoa, what? Wait, is, is that why, is that why it took you like six months to subscribe to my channel, Cat? after we, I was on here for the longest <laughs> totally time? totally your voice, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so we, can't, um, we get to answer, we, we never answered this question ourselves oh, about what we're going to change for our business. Oh, yeah, here. Whoops. So for me, I started this at the end of last year. You guys always hear me talk about CSO. I'm clearing stuff out. I'll keep it PG tonight. But uh, I'm my goal this year is to first quarter is to knock out, try to actually blow through as much of my inventory as I potentially have. I want to actually downsize my store size so that I can literally get to the point where I'm getting items to start flipping them online. And also, just like Chris here, I'm actually going to double down on clothing this year because I actually hired my mother-in-law to help start listing. And I focused in on clothing. And I had a massive haul at the end of last year. I got 60 pieces from the University of Tennessee and other stuff that were uh, coaches uh, clothing. And I started listing that. And it's been selling like hotcakes. So I see there's a lot of potential there for growth for me with clothing because I come across it super cheap all the time. But ultimate goal is I actually want to start buying storage units later on this year and um, you know start blowing out storage units on uh, whatnot. So that sounds yeah. Fun. Yeah. I said I was going to downsize and then I got more employees and now we're going the opposite direction, but that's okay. Um, I pivot a lot. I am like very ADHD and like business and life. If you haven't noticed, I can't like, it, yeah, that's just me. Um, but I think our big thing is just, I want to be more organized and more efficient in what I'm doing, whether it's through systems for me, for my employees. I have sent my newsletter three weeks in a row every Monday. <laughs> and I, when I sent it the first Monday of the year, cause that was one of my resolutions. I wanted to just keep up with my newsletter. Um, I hadn't sent one since July. <laughs> and I was like, I couldn't even remember the name of the website to go on. <laughs> It was pretty bad. And I pay for that service to have my newsletter too. So I was paying for something I don't use. So I would like to get more efficient. I, I always say I hate clothes, but I really don't hate clothes. If you guys watch me, you know, I pick up a ton of clothes and that's because there are a lot of thrifts near me that have dollar clothes. So like even a dollar into 15 or 20 is amazing, like return on investment. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I need to, I, I would like to find a balance though. It's so hard. Like Alex was saying, like between eBay and Amazon, for me, it's between eBay and whatnot. Um, that's where my balance is because we did double on whatnot last year than we did on eBay, but the profits are probably about the same because I sell stuff so much cheaper over on whatnot. Um, I need to get better. You know what I need to get better? I need to get better at like, forming relationships with people and be out there more because I like to stay home. Like I had fun with Rod and Dave, Marsha, Sandy, going to Oxford, Gino. jumping in the trunk. Gino, sorry, I love you. Um, <laughs> Gino's who like told us, <laughs> like Gino's who got me out to the village's yard sale yeah. in the first place. Um, I just need to make myself interact more because I am an introvert and I would prefer to sit home, but I like it once I go, I just have to make myself okay, I, get out. Yeah, I, like I, that, that more, I like to see you do more yard sales this year on your uh, treasure hunting channel. I think that'd be interesting to see you out picking at garage sales and stuff. I haven't found it like, so me and Dalton. So every Saturday Dalton has swim practice and which is in Gainesville, which is where they're typically are more. Um, I was sick this last Saturday, so we do go, but a lot of times I find like not even enough, like, I mean, it's just not. So hopefully I will find up. better ones. Yard sale season's coming up and starts in March and April. It's going to be the biggest opportunity for you in the state of Florida. And then it's going to be like September through like November, the time frame. So keep those months in mind because there's going to be a lot of stuff to do. Um, Marsha, do you have the link for my newsletter? If not, I can find it. I think bad it, cat. That's not a newsletter like through eBay you're talking about, right? No, no. I have okay. like a, like actual newsletter. I just write like I'm writing to my friends and babble on for about three paragraphs every Monday. Like I'll update on sales and then like what we did over the weekend. And I will, okay. I will find it. I will find it. Hold on. I can find it. Um, all right. Oh, wait, super chat. 
I'm like squirrel tonight, worse than normal, if you can't tell. Um, Catherine sent us a $9.99 super chat and said, thanks for the Tuesday night chats. Great info. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Here's the whale. I love the whale. Gino, Gino Spines made the whale. Here you go. <laughs> we got Alex at the 421. 79 more to go, guys. We'll get him the 500. What? In the 500 tonight. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay, I'm putting in. Here's the link to join my newsletter. You get a free um, shipping supplies checklist if you join it. Um, what else? I promise to put out a new uh, YouTube video more than Biscuit Butt for all the new subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> And so far, I don't think did Tiffy Tiffy Pie put out one, and I think she quit again. Did she quit again? I haven't seen any. I don't know she actually I put out a couple. She put out a couple there. She, yeah. need, she wasn't feeling well though. She had some yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, focusing a lot on shorts. Yeah, shorts are good too. I really need that. Should be one of like my YouTube business goal uh, is getting better at shorts. I have been getting better at my editing. I don't know if any of you have noticed, nobody said anything and that's okay. I figure it can't be horrible if you're not complaining, right? Like if you notice and you're like, what the hell are you doing? Then it's bad. But I have been doing a little more with my editing on, um, mainly on this channel, not on the catch treasure hunting. Um, and I, I talk too much for shorts is my problem. That's why I never feel like I can do shorts very well, obviously, by this. Okay, Top says, do you turn on accept offers on eBay? 100% all the time. I, turning on accept offers is great because if someone comes in with a reasonable offer, you can accept it. And if they come in with a lowball offer, you have the opportunity to counter them and try to get an item sold. Uh, especially it's great for people have larger stores with older items. Um, having those offers on is a great way to try to move some, some inventory out. Yep. Me too. hundred percent offers on everything. And I don't set the minimum or maximum. I just let them come in. Yeah. So for a while I used to have them on, I took them off. I have them back on now. Um, and I think they're, they're crucial to your business. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I hate getting those low ball offers. I will tell you those people are going to try just test the water. They're going to try to push your limits to see how much, how low you're willing to go. But if they're serious, but there's people that send me 40% off or 50% off and I counter them at like, you know, I send them a reasonable counter back and they'll pay up and they'll, they'll accept that. But sometimes people just like to test the water, you know, see how far they can push you. But at 100% highly recommend putting best offers on. I have a very funny story about this. So those of you that know me know, like if I'm feeling caddish, I will respond to a low ball offer at like 50 cents off of my asking price today somebody accepted and paid i was like did that really just happen because <laughs> they sent me like less than half and i sent them like it was like it was like 16 dollars, but they sent me less than half i countered it was 16.49 i countered with 16 dollars. they accepted and paid and i'm like that's the first time that's ever <laughs> happened um so you never know um mo a lot of times i'll decline if they're that low but it depends on my mood. I figured they'll get the point if I counter, uh, if they really rub me wrong, I counter a penny under asking price. Um, this one, I countered 49 cents under asking and they pay, they pay. Wow. Um, you know, I, I, yeah. So I, I think it helps you in the algorithm. I agree with not putting on the lower and the upper because if you have that item in six months or a year, your lower you're willing to take might change. And you aren't going to yeah. go back and check that minimum. I've had it where I I used to do that when I first got back into reselling four years ago. And I lower the price and it's like, your price is lower than your offer you're willing to accept. And I'm like, oh, whoops. Like, so, yeah. All right. Let's see. Miss Linda wants to know, should she sign up with a cross listing app and start cross posting now? She's just starting out, but maybe it's better to learn now that she has a smaller amount of listings. So she learns as her business grows. So what do you think? Yeah, so I've used cross listing apps in the past. Um, I've used two of the bigger ones out there. And um, 
they're great for established sellers, I think. But I think if you're just starting out, the cost that you're going to pay for them, um, for any of the ones that, that are going to do what you want them to do, um, might be a little uh, cost prohibitive for some people. Uh, there, I know there are some free apps out there. I think Flip is one of them. Um, yeah. But I don't, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I've never used it, but I don't think it automatically delists items once you sell them, correct? It does not. It does and, not. And that's a danger when you're a new seller. List if perfectly you does. The list perfectly does. They have does. that function now. Um, yeah. And uh, the, other, the other one does as well. So we will, I'm not going to mention their name. You can uh, say it, man. No, no, you can. No, no. We talk about all of them. Okay. So a vendor does as well. Um, but you have to pay for those services. So, yeah. and you know, right. for a new seller, it's probably not cost prohibitive to do that. But for trying one of the free apps is, but you have to be on top of your listings. If you sell it on eBay and you cross list it to Marcari and Poshmark, make sure you take that listing down because you don't want to get the same sale and then have the same stuff we've been talking about happen all night where you're going to have, you know, have to cancel an order on someone. Yeah. I just started a cross promoting again. I sold something on Poshmark and then it freaking sold on eBay. So Is because I buyer? used I used the free one, which doesn't delist it. So was it the same it, buyer? I don't know if it was the same buyer. Yeah. I'm not Probably sure. Was. That, that, it, so really. a lot of times when you have if, if you are using cross listing and it sells like real like a similar time frame, it's the same yeah. buyer buying multiple items. It, it happens okay. us all the time. But I would say a couple things. One is I think Chris hit the hit nail on the head. You, you have to have an X amount of inventory in your listed on eBay before you want to start cross like to make it worth your, your while. Um, I would say if you're going to pay for a cross listing service, you know, um, number two, I would say if you're going to use a cross listing service and you're not going to pay for like their, their uh, automatic delister only use those. If you have the apps on your phone and you have access accessibility to those, uh, to those things. Cause if I'm traveling, and I something sells on like eBay, I'll just go on Macari and Posh and just remove it, you know, on my app um, while I'm out and about and stuff like that. You know, that way I don't get myself in trouble at the end of the day. But I would say I think any cross license software you use is worth its weight in gold. I would just say you have to be established and you would have to have, you know, at least 250 or more items in your store. I, I think that's a good, probably good starting point. I would say just generally speaking. Um, as you get more and more items in your store, the higher, the better, the bigger stores are better to get because the, the bigger plans, because you will be able to use the automatic delister. But I will say having all those items in your store, one thing that we never, and people never mentioned about this is, it's also a backup. You're paying to back up your items. So if you get kicked off eBay, you lose your account on Macari, like you have all those items already preloaded in this perfectly or Vendu, whatever you're going to do to quick go on and just relist them to all the other platforms or try a new platform right off the bat. So it's definitely worth its weight in gold. I highly recommend people try it. I use this perfectly. So is Kat. Um, you know, the reason why we always do this because their community is probably the biggest one. Because we the love best. them. They, they, they have the best community, the best customer service. They have a, a huge Facebook group. You can go on there. You can chat with other people. They have listing parties because, you know, we all know how lonely reselling is. And you can go on there and list with other people that are similar things, you know. So it's it's worth its weight in gold. I, I I'm going to throw a little bit of shade. I'm going to throw a little bit of shade. Just a little bit. I'm feeling rowdy tonight, if you can't tell. List Perfectly also has never paid anyone to promote their service you cannot say that for any other cross posting service that i know okay we we make affiliate commissions don't get me wrong we do earn money from that but they have never paid us to advertise for them we advertise for them because we like them and we use their service other places and i know because those other places have contacted me all of the ones i've seen in the chat that are not list perfectly have offered me money to promote them List Perfectly has never paid anybody a dime to promote them. So it's all organic. I love that. I love the late. I love, I just love the ladies. I'm not going to lie. I've been using them three years. The community, sometimes it's more about people than money to me. Um, and this is one of those situations. And I agree to answer the original question. And then I have to do giveaways because Marsha keeps yelling at me on Instagram because I'm squirrel tonight. Um, you need to be established. I would not try. You need to master eBay. Rod said good, 200, 250 listings. Chris had a good point. You want it to pay for itself. And if you don't have a lot of listings, it's not going to. So if 
I 200 250 where you're buying a store, you know, I would say is a good point to do it. She did yell at me. I have proof. Um, yeah, if we continue, yeah. one other thing just added to for that, that seller, if, if they're new and they're just starting out and they're selling on eBay, get a Bonanza account as well. Bonanza's free. It's free I, and it's one click. I, Right, and they automatically delist from eBay if you sell it on Bonanza, which is phenomenal, and, and vice versa. It's just it it's so funny. Over, I it see stuff and unsold, and I'm like, where the hell that come from? And it's Bonanza. I get a PayPal message like, I got money. I'm like, why did I get money in my PayPal account? I'm like, oh, it was a Bonanza sale. How cool! <laughs> so, it, and it's super random. Like one month, I'll sell six things, and then it'll be two months before I sell anything on there. So, yeah, same um, here. Like, a great but once you set it running. up, it's super easy yeah. and it's really streamless. Like that's that's a good point. All right, I listen. Okay, I'm gonna let the winner pick what they get. Okay, because I have two. I have three cool things. I'm gonna let you pick one of three, and I'm only giving away one. So, hashtag eBay, because okay. Here's what you can win from eBay. Oh, four things you can pick. I have this really, I need to make me big. Nobody can see me. I have this really cool eBay fanny pack. Choice number one. I have this eBay thrift list sell repeat koozie. I have, oh, I have five things. You can pick whatever you want. Sell ya yeah, eBay, eBay open 2022 buttons. eBay pom poms. And an eBay open a book. And this was sent to me by a viewer. And she said I could give it away if I wanted. So, uh-oh. I should not be allowed to click buttons tonight. Okay. Um, so hashtag eBay and you can tell me what you would like out of those things. We will grab another question while we are letting you guys enter. Um, Cindy wants to know, does it take a while to receive the Bubble Millers from Giaro Pack? Uh, typically, no, it does not. They ship them from their Amazon store. Please make sure you sent me your mailing address. And I, I'm not sure this is the case, but I had somebody say, it's been a month. I haven't got them. And I went into my email and they had never replied to me when I'm like, I need your mailing address. Because if I don't know where to tell them to send them to you, then they can't get shipped out. So that could be the case or they could be lost. So email me and I'll check on it. And just make sure you send me, if you win them, make sure you send me your mailing address. And I did want, where did it go? I did want to put this up. So I haven't really shared this a lot. I shared it on whatnot. Um, I'm going tomorrow to have a biopsy done and another procedure. Um, I haven't been feeling really well. And I'm not like, I, I just, I don't, I just keep going no matter what the hell is going on. But Thank you. Bobby must have been on whatnot when I shared tomorrow is my procedure that I'm going in for. Um, and I have not shared what is going on, but I will tell you I'm having a biopsy and I think it will be fine. And they're trying to reschedule it, but I'm going to try not to let them because I've waited long enough. But we'll see who wins. But thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. It's giving me goosebumps. I, I'm feeling better now, but I was not feeling well for a while. All right. Um, we already answered that one. Question for Rod or anyone. I have several hundred Star Wars trading cards from the 1970. Would it benefit me to get the PSA grading service? So Alex or Chris, if you know about them, tell us. If not, we'll go to Rod. I'll go to I Rod. think Rod should go with that one. I've never graded anything. So... I will say this. I actually just got a shipment back from PSA. I got a bunch of cards graded. I will be putting out on my flipping and punching channel probably next week or in two weeks. I'll be putting out how to grade sports cards. I'm going to do how to grade VHS, how to grade uh, video games and comic books. So I will be kind of making these videos for you guys to see that. But the, the big, biggest thing is, is knowing the condition of the card. Um, when it comes down to several different things, one is the centering of the card, the edges of the card, the corners of the card, the surface of the card. Um, what you want to do is I would recommend going to eBay, look at PSA 9, PSA 8, and it's going to cost you like 20 bucks per car to get graded, plus the shipping there and back. And it's also going to, you run the risk of getting a card that could be lower than what you expect. So I always say, 
think of the worst case scenario. If the worst case scenario is going to get you like three times your money, what you originally have into it, then it could be worth sending it in and get graded. So if a, if you think the car could potentially get a, a nine or a, a seven between a seven and a nine, and that you pay 20 bucks for that card. And if the seven is going to get you a hundred bucks, then it may be worth spending the 20 bucks to try to risk it. But if that lowest one's going to get you 20 bucks, what you're going to pay to do that. And the eight's going to get you 30 bucks. At this point in time, you're better off probably just sound it raw because the chances you get in something higher than that may not be that well. Um, so that's kind of like just a, a short aspect of it. Um, when it comes to grading items, though, is there's a lot to learn and it's getting force fed with a fire hose. I, I highly recommend doing your research before you send anything in because it could be very costly. At the end of the day, you could lose money on what those think cars are worth and it might be just more beneficial to sell it raw. So. Don't look- some companies charge you more for the grading depending on the value of yeah. the item? Yeah. So the when it comes to sports cards, there's a couple of different ones. You have like PSA is going to get you the most bang for your buck. Uh, but then you also have like SGC, you have CGC, you have Beckett. And those cards won't get the same value as a PSA. But a PSA is going to have the highest grading cost and also the longest wait time. So it's, it's kind of a balancing act. Uh, when it comes to two to, to cards and sports cards or non-sports cards. Um, I forget. What was the question you just said? I just totally slipped my mind. The the Because I know when we got Pokemon cards graded, because yeah. my husband does Pokemon cards, yeah. the, the value of the card, they would charge him more for the grading yeah. if the card Definitely. was worth more. Yeah, so if it's, you know, let's just say for, I'll use an example, like, if, see, if it's 200 bucks or, or less, it might be 220 bucks. If it's you know, if it's going to be over a thousand dollars, then you may have to pay fifty dollars to get the car graded. You know, if it's over five thousand dollars, you're going to pay a hundred and fifty dollars to get the car. Graded. You know, the, I'm just throwing those numbers. I, I would have to look at look what the exact number is, but it's a lot of the companies. It's based on the value of the car and stuff, which that's a, my only my only problem with the grading companies. And I am all for grading companies, but you know, if I'm grading a car that is here's a Jordan, a PSA ten. Okay, I have Jordan sitting here. Um, and that card can get me, say, a thousand dollars, or they grading, you know, another card that is like I have LeBron James rookie card right here. You know what I mean? Like, in you know, if you have a card that can get you a hundred dollars, the grading process is still going to be the same. You know, the only thing that sucks is they're going to just charge you a higher fee because the card's a higher value. There you go. What should you do to protect your eyes when you send it in for grading? So, uh, put your card in a penny sleeve, then you put you put it in a top loader. Or they actually have these uh, softer cases that you can put them in to send them in, depending on the grading company, what they prefer. Um, you can also use a third-party um, submitter, which will give you a bulk discount on it. You just make sure you go through like a reputable company. Um, but it just depends on, on it. There's, Yeah, I highly recommend before you send anything in, don't just jump in and take a leap of faith. Do your research. Is there a channel you could recommend them to watch about grading that yeah. you think has good information? I mean, if you just go on YouTube, you search, you know, how to get Mike's car graded or how to submit a car for grading for PSA, you'll have, there'll be a ton, a dozen on there, stuff like that. I'm going to be putting out a video in the next week or two. I just, I filmed the unboxing of the sports cars I got back. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to the end of my video on my flipping and punching channel. And then I'm going to do how to grade sports cards too on there. So kind of just give you a step-by-step what to look for kind of a process bro i'm gonna simplify it for a lot of people and you know especially our newbie that kind of want to learn about it but yeah that makes sense all right let's pick a winner for this and again you need to tell me what you want if you win and you need to email me your mailing address please thank you let's see april what would you like of the ebay stuff i showed Tell me, tell me. And then let's give away, speaking of GRO pack, let's give away two GRO packs. And then we'll give a tape gun away from American Bubble Boy. Hashtag GRO pack. And let's find April wants the book. You got it. So April, it comes with a little pen too. Pen and a little eBay open book. Um, Email me your address. I tried to do the fireworks again. I already forgot how to do it. You got to do the fireworks. Oh, I was trying to give her the fireworks for the winning right there. It's not working on maybe on the little screen. That that happened last week too. And she's like, I'm just sitting here looking silly because it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It works when it wants to work. I'm usually just Uh, sitting here looking silly though. 
it's okay. All right, Don wants to know what program do we use to edit our videos? I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I like it because it's a very robust program, um, but there is a very, very high learning curve if you've never used editing software before. And when I first started out, I never had. I watched probably two or 300 hours of video on how to do it. And I literally downloaded and read the entire 3000 plus page manual on how to actually use the software because I wanted to know everything about it. Um, but I know there's definitely a lot more user-friendly ones out there, but I'm old, so I'm stuck in my ways. I learned something, and I'm just going to keep on keeping with it. Also, when you when you answer a question, you let people know, are you using a PC? Are you using Apple? Oh, are you sure. using your phone? So, yeah, I use a PC, I uh, desktop PC, yeah, Windows-based. Yeah, I'm using Adobe uh, Pro Premiere on my uh, Mac laptop. Do you use that for shorts and long form? No, shorts, I'm just using usually just Instagram to edit things or TikTok, and then I'll just save them before launching them. So for me, so I I would say if you have an Apple product, an, an iPhone or, or, or a MacBook, I would say if you're just starting out, a very simple program would be iMovie. All right, so... I use I use iMovie when I first started. I mean, I still use iMovie. I'm going to move to DaVinci Resolve because there's a lot more you can do in there. But I would say too, if you are starting out, go on YouTube and watch tutorials on like, you know, they have like 20, 30 minute tutorials. You can teach you how to edit and complete video, and it's gonna and you're gonna be continue to learn and learn and learn over time. But um, I edit on my Mac and I use I use iMovie right now. It's very simplistic. I've used Final Cut Pro. I've used other things in the past. Um, I just did it because it's free is on my thing and I can airdrop from my phone. I can edit my phone and airdrop to my computer and vice versa. Jesus is here. He asked me a question earlier. Jesus is here. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen him enter, but Jesus is in the chat for sure. Um, I use Keen Master, K-I-N-E Master. And then I've been playing with Instagram's templates for reels. And um, what do you, you edit on? So they know. I'm editing on my phone. Everything on my phone. I bought a nice gaming laptop with plans of doing it, and I just went right back to my phone. Um, I I have been watching Keen Master. That's how I know you say it, Keen Master, not Kinda Master, which is what I was saying. Um, I have been watching their videos. That's how I've been learning to do some of the editing stuff that I have been doing. So that's what I have been watching on YouTube. You can win. Jesus has only won twice in, in like six months. I mean, he is lucky Jesus, but he's only won twice. So but that Kat, seems uh, like a lot. So a lot of people don't don't realize that. You're, how many videos do you have on both your channels combined? Like a thousand? I have over a thousand on this and, channel. And then my other channel doesn't have many. It has under 50, I think. It's so she, relatively she's new. She's done all over a thousand videos on her phone in edit. So, and she's used, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't so record on my phone anymore. I do yeah. want to specify with that. Um, my talking videos, I use a camera I'm using now, which is a Sony ZB one, which is a pretty expensive camera. It's a blogging camera. And then, um, I use my GoPro for my thrifting and my garage sale. I have GoPro 10, and I use that for my thrifting videos, but I just transfer it all to my phone and then I edit it on my phone. But I recorded with just my guys, you can start a YouTube. They I've seen people with like hundreds of thousands of subscribers that still only use their phone. Like you a hundred percent don't need to buy all the stuff. I bought it when YouTube started making money, and so I wanted to upgrade a little bit. Um, but I use my phone only for a very, very long time. Yeah, Retro Rick has what uh, almost two hundred thousand subs, and he uses phone. What the hell's has over half a million, and he edits and films on his phone. Like, so I mean, you don't need fancy equipment to to get this going. And I highly recommend not starting out just using your phone because it could be you don't yeah, know. If don't you like spend it. money until yeah. you figure out if you like yeah. it and if you're going to keep on doing it. All right, let's pick two winners. Marsha will put the directions if you win. Dun, da, da, da. Two people. I don't see Jesus. Oh, April just won twice. April, go buy a lottery ticket. All right, let's draw again. Da, 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 da. 
Sometimes when you're lucky, you're lucky. I have no control over this thing. So Finders keepers, Miss Eileen got the second one. And then we will do hashtag my go-to tape for the American Bubble Boy tape gun, tape gun. So Marsha the other day won the first giveaway in my whatnot show. And then she run a Wii from Rod. So Marsha yeah. was supposed to go get a lotto ticket the other day. Yeah, if you guys don't know, I do these big storage out, you know, blowouts, and I will give away big items for people that come in my thing. So I give away Nintendo Wii, we've given away an N64. I'm either give away a Sega Genesis or something on the next one we have coming up. So make sure you follow me and whatnot. Yes, for sure. All right, let's get a question while you guys are entering. Yes, and I agree. Somebody said American Bubble Boy tape is great quality. We just Where'd she put it? She put it. The, I'm, my employee already put everything up. It's all organized. I'm like, where is the stuff? Um, we just got in another case of American Bubble Boy tape today. Um, that is all we use, and it is really, really nice. Okay, what is one item you would buy right now and hold on to for five years to sell for profit? That's a tough one for me because I just want to buy stuff now and flip it right now. I don't want to hold on to stuff for five years. Um, I honestly... I'll defer to the rest of you if you have any thoughts on things that might appreciate in value, but it's, it's like playing stocks. It's tough to see, tell what's going to appreciate five years from today. Alex? He's muted. <laughs> Sorry. Alex? <laughs> He's something, muted. To hold, <laughs> something to hold on to. We think it's going to go up in value. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. I would yes. buy more of the new Logan Paul wrestling figurines. I bought about 10 of those when they dropped and they went up to like $200. So I would, I wish I had another 10. I would hold on to them. So I'm, I'm like Chris, like I can make 10 times the amount of money just by flipping items over and over again. But I would say it would have to be an extremely high and collectible. Something that's very sought after. It would either be a Mickey man or rookie card like a, a very high grade, like a PSA 10, PSA 9, like something like that you just, or Amazing Fantasy, which is the number one, which would be the first appearance of or Amazing Fantasy 15, which is the first appearance of Spider-Man. So like that would be at a very high grade. I mean, those are just stuff that you just don't come by. And if you look at the projection over time, they have just been on this upward trend. So mm. I am with Chris and Rod and honestly, there's nothing. If I buy it now, I'm going to sell it now. The value could go up. It also could go down. If we only had that vision. I said that when I did my Lisa Frank video last week. Do you know, I like, I had so much of that stuff and it's selling for $200 for a friggin' folder that I had in high school that cost a dollar. You know, I mean, if we could see in the future, it would be great. But Wait, for me, I, I'm in the 1940s. Listen, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, Rod is my husband's age. I think they are actually. I think they're actually the same age. Um, so there are some. Listen, there's Lisa Frank since the '80s till now, so you can't say that. I'm just. Gonna I learned a lot time. from that video. Um, no, you're right, though. It does sell. Uh, they sell. They're super hot, and it's the like the littlest things on there too can sell, like the pencils and everything. How much? I've been selling you, stickers I, for twenty to fifty dollars yeah. a sheet. Kat, wow. how many items did you end up getting overall in that big purchase? A hundred and four. So I was about four dollars in a piece. Um, and we are well, well into the profit. And I still have the highest value item listed. Um, we've sold a lot at sixty-five dollars, um, which ten at sixty-five, six hundred and fifty. I only paid four hundred for the whole lot. So just ten of the hundred items puts us into profit. Um, but I didn't like she's still making things and I didn't realize and I did research this after somebody commented. So I do learn things from you guys commenting and from somebody that's local to Lisa Frank. Apparently she is like was voted the worst employer in Phoenix, Arizona, because she treated employees so bad. Just a wow. side note. <laughs> um, and I'm like, well, for me, if it sells, it sells. Like, I don't care what the lady, like, you know, um, I'm not buying it new. It's vintage. So I'm not giving her, her any more money by doing that. I'm just giving me money. Um, 
but yeah, I, I researched it because somebody said that and I was like, holy crap, like there, sure enough, there's the article saying her staff turns over multiple times a year. So yeah, anyway, side note about Lisa Frank that I didn't talk about in my video. All right, one, one tape gun, let's pick the winner and then we have a little bit more time to answer some questions. I got to the giveaways late because I'm squirrel tonight. Patricia, Casey, you got the tape gun. So for the tape gun, you just need to email me and I will give you a coupon code. Okay, Matt wants to know, how do I comp jewelry when sometimes I can't find similar designs? So I actually, I was talking talking to Tucker's dad on the phone today for a long time, Ryan, um, and we were discussing jewelry. So for jewelry, after having years of experience with jewelry, with eBay and whatnot, first things first, I don't pick up things that are not signed or attributed to a name for jewelry to put on eBay. The market is saturated by overseas sellers. And if you don't have a name or something that you can keyword, like I can still sell my Native American turquoise jewelry without a maker. It's gonna sell for more with a maker. Um, I So that's a good example. So if I had a turquoise sterling cuff, I couldn't find a price. I would search the solds and look for one closest to the design and size that I had. Same thing if it was a flower brooch or whatever it might be. But don't expect jewelry to sell fast if it's not branded, even if it's sterling silver, even if it's gold, because the market is flooded on eBay with jewelry. And I would advise promoting high. We promote at 12% at our highest on all jewelry. When I did a lot of jewelry, I was actually promoting at 15% because the market is so like it's flooded. But if you find name signed pieces, then you're good to go. So if you're buying for eBay, I would not buy it unless you have a signature or no. If you get in a big lot, I whatnot <clears throat> was my go-to but now I'm trying to just pick up more of the higher end sign pieces that I can sell on eBay. I hope that makes sense. If you have more questions, just ask me. Russell has 20 neckties that are not worth selling individually. Should I make a lot under ties or would you put it under the craft category? I was told a lot of crafters will buy them for projects. I would just look at sold comps under both categories and see where the highest value is on them. Uh, I personally had last year when I was going through my clothes and getting more and more of it, I did buy a bunch of different ties just to take a shot with them and see what the market was bearing, some higher end stuff. And honestly, ties are really tough to sell, especially pre-owned. So making a lot and if crafters are buying them and you can you see that people are buying them in lots that way, list them that way. If it's, especially if you're not that much into it and you can make a profit on it, definitely a good thing to do. Yeah, I would definitely lock them together. Um, I would think to put them under ties, but if, yeah, like you said, if they're selling under crafts, then throw them under there, but check the sold comps. Yeah, I would uh, definitely lock, lock them together. It's normally what I would do, stuff like that. But you can actually use keywords that you can actually probably cover a lot of ties and crafting in the same category and the same title. So you can actually hit both markets. Um, you just have to be, you know, just be a wordsmith when it comes to, uh, a word ninja when it comes to your titles and you should be able to do that. And then also in your description as well. Yeah. And people make tree skirts out of ties. They look amazing. I had really? like, <laughs> I found that because, okay, there's the tie guy. I don't know if he still makes YouTube videos and I watched the tie guy and I thought I could sell ties. Well, I cannot <laughs> sell ties to save my life. I've sold air maze ties. Those are the only ties I've sold. Um, and yeah, I, I would probably, me personally, I would put them in crafts, but that's just me. But Rod's right. If you keyword it right, they're going to pull it up regardless of what category you put it in. Like men's neckties, throw a couple of brands in there, put for crafts, put lot. Yes, I'm going to make awesome. them big. Look, they're so, so cool. freaking cool. Right? That's incredible. Oh, wow. They are. I yeah, found I that and I was like, category. man, it almost made me want to do it, but. Yeah, then I'd thing. be making like a hundred tied tree skirts because that's what I do. 
Yes, <laughs> April is now in the running with Lucky Jesus. She has won twice, so she is no Lucky Jesus out. was last year. All right, April's this year. He was totally <laughs> last. <laughs> Thank you guys for subbing to Chris and to Alex. We greatly appreciate it. I'm sure they do as well. Deborah, <laughs> look at him with his fancy card. Um, Deborah said she has four resin uh, pier candles, two or seven inches, two or nine inch. Would you sell as a lot in pairs or like list by one and two quantity? I think that's what she needs. I'm going to pass. I have no idea what a resin pier Kindle is so I don't know. I would base really just base that decision on the sold comps. If they're selling, you know, more often and better in sets, then I would list them as a set. Good okay, cat, you can take this one. Yeah, so lucite or resin candles can be very valuable, like fifty plus dollars a pair, guys. So I would look them up, um, so you know what they look like because you can find them really cheap sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I would sell them in pairs by the height. Oh, they're pure one. Eat pure, but look up for everybody. Look up Lucite candles. Um, pure one, I would do in sets of the seven inch and the nine inch is what I would do. We do very well with pure one, guys. My pure one charger plates, we've made like close to $1,000 off them. Pure one is a good brand to pick up. 110% pick up pure one. Um, but the Lucite candles, that's another bolo. But yeah, Pier One, I would do in pairs. Oh, look, see, he's like the resource of the night. What yeah, are the prices on him? Look, six, 45 bucks, $99. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's just the top four right there. They sell for a 40, lot. 45. Wow. Something I'll be looking for. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uralali says, what do you do if they break the item and then return it to you? I think we've already talked about that. I mean, if we're taking returns, um, you know, you can, you know, take half off um, on the return value that they're giving to you. And then you can also, you know, reach out to eBay for the other half um, because yeah. you got it you got in the same condition you sold it. And I would ask for pictures of the box because what I would want to do first is know, did the handling cause the breakage or did the buyer? A lot of times it's the handling. Like I had yeah. somebody tell me I had horrible packing and their box looked like somebody stomped on it <laughs> with boots. Um, so ask ask them for photos of the box and the item and a lot of times you are better off to just if it's obvious it was from the shipping i refund them i don't want to pay for them to return something broke to me that i can't resell so if it's completely destroyed you don't think they're fishing for a partial refund and a lot of times you can tell you know oh it's dinged or like stupid little complaints they're trying to get a partial refund but if it was damaged and shipping whether it was the carrier or your packing i would just refund them and because yeah. i'm i don't want to pay money for them to ship me back something i can't use most they send you proof of pictures of it that, that's damaged and i do the same thing because you are ultimately responsible for the item to the buyer it re the buyer receives it in good condition yeah whether it was the post office or you. Yeah. Kelly wants to know, how do you take photos of your clothes to make the... <laughs> the way to look this good is in them? Is weird, but I how usually... Do you take to, look, to make the clothes look good, I model them. <laughs> so, so Chris, how do you use... How do you take pictures of clothes in your, for your OnlyFans account? Yeah, so um, I usually <laughs> do my clothes next to me while I don't have any clothes on. That's usually how that works. <laughs> now, um, this is so for clothing. Um, I actually use. I actually started out with one of those model forms that you can buy, and I found that to be very tedious because those forms are good for a certain size, and if you have something smaller or bigger, it looks terrible on those things. Yeah. I just switch to a table, and I have a like a drop cloth that looks like a, just wood paneling, and I just lay everything out on that. Take my photos. I usually try to get a little artistic with it. Like the wood paneling is going one way. So the shirt's angled a different way. So it pops out on it. Um, and then if I'm in a pinch and I can't take photos on that, I will take my photos wherever I want. And then I will just add them into photo room and change the background that way. Um, 
you know, and just get as many or as little photos as you need. There are some things I literally take a single photo of and it still sells. There's other things I take, you know, 10 photos of because I want to show all the details that are on the shirt um, or the piece of clothing that I'm selling, whether it's a shirt, it's jeans, it's a jacket, whatever. Um, so you just have to know what your, your item is. If it's a $15, $20 shirt, don't go crazy with it. But if it's a higher end, the item you're selling, you know, in the, you know, 50 to $100, hundreds of dollars, definitely more photos, the better and the more details you can be you're going to have better success trying to sell it. But I would, like I said, I would definitely not recommend those model forms. Those was yeah. waste, waste of money. I used to use the mannequins too. And then I just, I built a flat lay and I'm just using flat lay now. Yep. I was the same way. I used to use the mannequins. And then I use the, the super hanger, which is like two hangers taped together. <laughs> so you can get the, like the, the super uh, shirt, like stretch out look. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on YouTube. You can actually search it. You can see how to make one. But um, flat lay is probably the best. And then just, you know, flat lay. And then I use photo room a lot just to, to make adjustments. Yeah, we use flat lay and photo room. And I turn the light on feature on photo room. I love that to brighten and close up a little bit. And you can apply it to all and brighten all 50 photos. Uh, scarves we do on the mannequin still. That is the only thing we really still do on the mannequin. Everything else is flat lay um and photo room for us we just lay it on the cart like literally because there's a shop light here so it's a really good light we just lay it on the carpet down here i'm gonna try and get my husband to build a table but most of our photos our high schooler does it so her back is a lot better than than mine and my other employee and she doesn't mind bending over um when i did it i would only do like 10 and then i'd be like okay i'm doing something else <laughs> um, is eBay wanting us to promote our store? That's a new thing, right? The promote your store yeah. thing. Yep. yep. They yeah, always want you to, it. they want you to do click per, they want you to do whatever makes them more money. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't do any of that. I just promote my items and that's it. I'm not doing, I'm not promoting my store or any of that other nonsense that's going on right now. I don't think there's a real need yeah, to. Yeah, that click stuff is crazy. Yeah. Yep. I don't mess with that either. Yeah, I'm not promoting my store right now. I just promote my items, and uh, but it's what eBay pushes, and you know they're if if they're pushing it, there's, they're pushing it for a reason. They're gonna push your your items. Can't say yeah, it. I I think it might be worth it for people who have really niche down stores. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. my store, they might be like, "What the hell is going?" On? Like, cause I'm all over the place, you know. So I don't know for me, it would be worth it. Amy, Amy wants to know, and listen, Amy has now made me want to go to this. Have any of us been to the unclaimed baggage in Alabama? I really want to go because it's not very far from me. And I, I went to we visit family there. And, yeah, and I forgot to go there. I didn't have the time to go check Where it out. Where in Alabama is it? Is it? I'm trying to think of the town where it's in. It's just like the first, you know, town. Somebody that, tell right us. Right from uh, Tennessee. Yeah, and my wife will let me know in the chat. My wife that's, that's a town in Alabama, right? Mobile. Yeah, it's a town. Yeah, Mobile <laughs> is. Coleman. Hey, Miss Brenda says it's in Coleman, Alabama. Let me see okay. how far it is, and we can have a field trip. I'm down to Are go. Are they open all the time? So this is like unclaimed baggage from the airlines, correct? Yeah, from the airlines. And they said it's closed, like that they have. So it's eight hours for me. That's not horrible. No, that'd be what ten That's hours for me. Yeah, ten from you. Yeah, I found oh, out about that really place because of the, the show. Yeah. Let's go field trip to Miami. You'll be getting bricks in those packages, can't? <laughs> You'll be in a whole new line of selling <laughs> items down there in Miami. <laughs> Hold you on. go down there and make your thrifting gonna... trip and just hit up all that. Gina, where, things. how do I find it out? You guys send me some information on this. Email me. Patty said we can buy online. I need this. I think Julian's probably not still in here. Julian did a lot of small unclaimed baggage, I think, and did a video on it. I did swear he, he did it. Was it, the, was it luggage or did he do post office unclaimed? Uh, oh, maybe he did post office I one. He did post office, yeah. Is it oh, an auction? Though you guys are talking about no, auction, they're talking about a store. Yeah, it's like a store, like a thrift store, and yeah. it's closed, right? There's a store set up just like a thrift store that all comes from the airlines. Yeah, and they it, said it, that they haven't looked through it. 
I'm a sucker for mm. listen. My husband used to get so mad because we did pallets when we first started getting back into reselling. And man, every mystery box, I'm like, I need that pallet. And it would like nine times out of 10, it was crap, I will tell you. But I had to know what was in the friggin' box. Like, I'm like, I need that pallet. So, uh, what happened to me, probably the worst thing that could ever happen to someone when you buy a mystery box. I bought a, a comic book mystery box. I hit the grand prize. So I, w I was like hooked. So that I just went on a uh, rampage for like two years buying mystery boxes off offline. Yeah, I think that the stores are in Scottsboro, Alabama. Scottsboro? It's I'm two never going to find me. it. But there is I'll an auction and there's a store that's set up like a thrift store. So I've seen both of them. I think... The airport auction is the best. Well, how do I find where this thing is? Let's go on a field trip. I love thrifting in Miami, so I'm down for going to Miami. I hate Miami itself, but I like thrifting in Miami. The traffic stresses me. I'm like gripping the steering wheel. It's a little ridiculous. All right. On Posh, you have to put the original amount of the sale. What price do you put in there? So if I know what the original price is, I will put it in there. Um, if I don't, I just sort of base it on like, hey, this is you know probably worth this. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I am so new to Posh because I just started selling clothing last year. But like for vintagey stuff, like you don't know what the original price was, so you know just take your best guess, I guess. But you know, sale price is what you're obviously going to sell it at. I'm just going to put something way higher so they think they're getting a great deal. I don't know if this is right. Could Kat will tell me not, but I put zero sometimes if I don't know the price of it. <laughs> yeah. I put zero on everything. That's what we put zero. Um, just because my mom does our cross posting and I don't want my mother guessing what things cost. That would be kind of comical. But um, <laughs> yeah, we just put zero on everything. Do you price? Are you guys okay saying we only have five more questions? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like they're going to say no when everybody's watching them um <laughs> do you price above what you expect because you turn on best offers typically i don't because i try to price things as to what the market is bearing right now when i first started out though and i was trying to get an established store i would undercut the market entirely um but now that i'm more established i'm just pricing as to market prices and i i, I Sometimes we'll price up a bit because of best offers on or running a coupon, but most of the time I don't. Most of the time it's just, hey, this item's selling for 50 bucks. I'm going to price mine at $49.99, that kind of deal. Yeah, I try to kind of come in the middle of the whole market. You know, I used to go high too because I had best offers on, but now I just want to move my stuff a little bit quicker. So I'm trying to base it on the market and what it's selling for. So I use probably a hybrid format where i do like an 80 20 rule where 80 percent of my items are going to be around a little below market price or in the, kind of the middle of the market price and about 20 percent of my items are going to be either at mark at the highest or above the highest on on because they are one-off items or they are items that haven't haven't found on ebay in a year or two they haven't sold so you know if the right buyer comes by they will get a higher price on but also put by a uh, best offer in those two so i kind of use a hybrid model yeah, so I typically come in right at market because, and I'm surprised Rod didn't say this, you make your money on the buy. Yeah, so correct. you should have room at market to accept offers yeah. of 10% yeah. off, 20% off, and still make a decent profit if you buy that room. So I set at market price, and then what I have started is I have... I send 30% off after three months because of what Alex said. I want it gone faster now. So I'm wanting a little faster turnover rate. So um, flat lay is just, uh, Jackie, flat lay is just laying it flat on the floor or a table. It's just exactly what it sounds like, just laying it completely, completely flat. Yeah. Um... If you ship a package that is never scanned and never arrives, does USPS eventually refund the unused postage? I've shipped two 
boxes that just vanished. So I'm literally dealing with this right now for a buyer who actually bought a necktie, strangely enough, um, <laughs> who it shipped out on December 13th and they still have not received it. Um, USPS says it's in transit and arriving late. Um, so those are the kind of deals where um, the buyer opened up a refund case. Um, I provided the tracking information. eBay will step in at the end of the week, I think it is, um, and make their final decision. And the buyer will most likely be refunded and it won't cost, I don't think it costs us anything when that happens, when USPS loses the package. Um, but I don't believe that they refund the money to your account. Uh, so I don't I don't use shipping through eBay. I use shipping through stamps.com. Um, and I, I very rarely see any kind of positives coming from them. They usually just hit me if they're going to charge me extra for something that I may have been under the weight on, so. Yeah, I would be doing the same thing. Have them open a case, you know, if it ever shows up. And hopefully it, hopefully it, it shows up, though. I'd hate to they get the refund and then it shows up. <laughs> so a good a good hack for this is anytime you have a package over seven days, it's missing or, or, or not. Go on the, the United States Postal Service website, file a claim for the item that is missing. And I would say magically, nine out of ten times, they find the package pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. I actually just filed one this morning and they found it this afternoon. So mm -hmm. it, it does happen. Um, it's a good way to do that. And it also helps your case out, too, because on eBay, eBay will sometimes add additional time to cases. So if you actually open a case, you put in there that they're investing in cases and it takes seven to 10 days or, or, or whatever it is, one or three days, I forget what the time frame is to the postal service. You can add that and I've had in the past, eBay has actually extended that case against me for that missing package. They gave additional time for the for the UPS to, or United States Postal Service to actually locate the package. So that can help too. Also too, when you do have um, a buyer opens up a claim against you for a missing package, you have, they might give you four or five days to respond to that claim. I send them a private message directly. I don't go on there and respond to the claim until almost the last day. They give myself the extra time because once you do respond, you go in there and add any information, the buyer can actually escalate it to, to eBay. So just keep those, those in mind. So I think all three of them missed this part. It was never originally scanned. Oh, if it was not no. scanned no, ever, no, they are no, not no, going to no, track no. it. They are not going to refund you, no, no. which is why if, so if you have this issue and what you need to do is you need to stand in line, you need to hand it to them and yeah. you need to watch them scan it. Um, we do our scan forms oh, where every single label we do is scanned in one to make it easier on them. Uh, Whatnot and eBay both have that. Posh Mercari do not. So our post office will actually take back our eBay and Whatnot. And then we go to the counter with the Posh and Mercari sales and they scan them and they give us a receipt. So if they never scanned it, you are out. Um, hopefully it will show up. I will tell you as somebody who has done this and not saying you did this, check the cracks and crevices in your car especially if they are smaller yep. items we have found stuff in the truck under the seat three months after it should have been mailed oh, and the, the bad thing is it was scanned because it was on the scan form um oh. and it was in the bottom of the truck um i just had one that kept updating every night and i did the missing search and i did turned on text notifications and it was 12 days out. It was to Phoenix, so it was a bit of a way. And it was a $70 item. Luckily, the buyer was understanding. It kept saying, in transit, running late. In transit, ru like it didn't have a location. In transit, running late at midnight, every night for five nights. And the guy said, hey, look, if it's not here by Monday, can we talk about a refund? And I'm like, if it's not there, we can talk about a refund. Um, but it ended up, updating last night to Phoenix and it was delivered today. So we were saved. but if they didn't, if you have no scan on it, you have no proof you, that they got it is the problem. Yeah. I do get nervous when I just set it on the counter and leave the post office that they get everything. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if it's picked up at your house, they should scan it when they pick it up from you. And what sucks for the postal carriers, if they pick it up from your house, they cannot scan a scan form. They have to scan each box individually. 
So just be aware of that. That we are we love our postal carrier, so we bring them to the post office to say it would cause her two extra trips to bring our boxes on Mondays because it fills up our truck and the truck bed sometimes. So for us, it wouldn't. All right, real quick, Barbara asked, Dal Dalton had two, well, he had a boo-boo. He bit his cheek and cut the whole thing at school. He fell on the playground, like, face oh, no. down. And the teacher, actually, I don't know if she thought I was mad. The teacher came out to my truck this morning when we dropped him off, and she said, I'm so sorry. I did not realize how bad it was. She called me when it happened, but his face didn't have time to swell, and the poor kid looked like he swallowed a golf ball for three days. And it was it was pretty bad. She's like, oh, I'm, so, I'm like, it's okay. He's healed. Like we're we're okay. And then he lost his first tooth. If you guys didn't see my post oh. on Instagram, and he cried for two hours because he wanted it back in his mouth. Um, oh. But now he just checks the mirror every five minutes to see if his big boy tooth is growing it. So he is fine <laughs> from both of them. That's um, I think this is going to go to Rod again. I have several comic books with stickers that say not for sale to minors. I don't know anything about comics and wonder if there is any risk in selling them. So on eBay, you have to be 18 years or older to have an account. Um, yeah. You can sell those on eBay. I would, if there, if the covers show any type of nudity or any type of, put stickers over, not on the actual comic book, but because the comic books are usually bagged and bored when these ones, because they are, protected but you can put little stickers or sticky notes over anything that you know any naughty parts on the covers but yeah you can sell <laughs> those on ebay and believe it or not there is a huge market for those a huge market or whatnot there's whatnot sellers that do nothing but adult comic books on there and if you ever go if you ever just randomly go on one of those streams you're in for a show let's just put it that way and uh, does anybody know if you can sell animals on whatnot like live like, animals? Like, like live? Yeah, like my animals. axolotls. They sell no, live plants on there. Why can I not sell live animals? <laughs> I don't know. I want to know. <laughs> okay, anyways, I want to sell my axolotls on whatnot. Um, Patricia's asking, where would I list a Mickey Moto pearl ring? I would list it on eBay because that is a very well-known name for pearls, so that would be a perfect thing to list on eBay. On... Um, Last question, then a super chat, and then I will let Chris and Alex tell you guys bye. Thank you, everybody, Rod, Chris, and Alex, for staying a little bit late so we get through the questions, and you guys for hanging out with us. Um, Russell wants to know if it's damaged. Can't you make a claim through the post office? Sure can. Rod already said it. Yeah, I think we didn't we already answer this pretty much. I feel like we did. Yeah. I think this is opinion, and like. <laughs> Ron knows what one. I'm gonna say. You can make one through the post office. Doesn't mean you're gonna get paid out through the post office. Right. Put it that way. You should try though. I raw so I actually if I had something broke again, I think I would file a claim because a few people have told us that they have gotten the claims approved. But when COVID first started, basically yeah. if it wasn't lost, they wouldn't approve it. They would make your buyer bring it into the post office. I had a buyer, they made bring it to four different post offices mm -hmm. and still she didn't find the person who was authorized to give that. Um, so me, if it's under 50 bucks, I'm not gonna waste my time claiming it. I'm just gonna refund the buyer, tell them to keep it and be done with it. But you can, yeah. and. Pixie Picker and a lot of people have said that the claims through Pirate Ship are easy to do. Yep. Um, I just got one. And Actually. yeah, yep. yeah. If you use a PO box instead of your your home address because you set up your account through your home address, you actually have to submit a copy of your driver's license, your ID. But I had a UPS package that got lost, and it literally went to customer service, filed a claim, and then within a couple of days, approved. So nice. Yeah. All right, Rosie sent a oh, dollar ninety nine super chat to close us out. I'm gonna give you mermaids because I haven't played the mermaids in a while, and then we'll let Chris and Alex tell you bye, and Rod and I will tell you what's going on with us. Here you go. Yeah, that's cute. Yvonne Thrifty Rich made that for when she hosted for me and Rod while we were in Phoenix and she said I could keep it and use it. All right, here is Chris to tell you guys where he can be found and what he's got going on. 
Well, first off, big thanks to Rod and Cadigan for having me on. I, I thank you so much. I love this. It's a great community and a great podcast or podcast, yeah, podcast that you have going on here. And I'm just happy that I got to be a part of it again. Uh, again, like I said in the intro, uh, YouTube channel, New Jersey Picker. I do put out videos twice a week, every Thursday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, like I said before, I'm taking a two-week break. Videos will be coming out again at the end of the month uh, on normal schedule. Uh, you can go to my eBay store right now. Again, New Jersey Picker. And I have 15% off coupon going for the entire store. Got some really cool items on there. And if you're not on the Trash to, trash to, cast, trash to Cash Facebook trash group. Trash to Crash. Trash to crash. It's 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 late and uh, I'm tired and I've been talking a bunch. Uh, trash to Cash Facebook group, uh, go join that. Uh, we have over thirty thousand strong on there. We're growing like crazy, over a thousand plus a month going. So it's a lot of fun. Perfect. Here is Alex. Yeah, I just want to start with obviously saying thank you to Cat and Rod for inviting me on. I've had a blast, and also everyone that uh, subscribed to me, I really appreciate it. And you can find me at Beard King Picker on YouTube, Instagram, whatnot, TikTok, everywhere. And also check out the Reseller Locker Room Podcast Thursdays on YouTube. Perfect. All right, Rod, what's going on? All right, guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to both New Jersey Picker and Alex. Alex is probably like 69, 68 subs away from hitting 500. So let's get the 500. Uh, we all know how tough that is. Um, so I have... I'll be dropping my pick and punching video tomorrow. I had a very, very late <laughs> night last night. I went to the Bucks game and Eagles game. Didn't work out very well for me. Um, check out my flipping and punching channel. I dropped a new video. I found something crazy in a dumpster. So go see that item right there. And uh, I'm going to next week, you guys want to meet Mrs. Punching. Next week, we're going to be doing a live whatnot, giving away stuff for free. We're doing a customer appreciation. Everything's free. Just show up to whatnot. I'm going to give away everything for free. And uh, we're also doing a big storage unit blowout there. And then if anyone's going to be in Orlando this weekend, I will be at the Trash to Cash Bash with Commonwealth Picker, uh, ADH Dave, American Arbitrage, uh, all those guys, Harry Tornado. So come out and see us. And then on Monday, and Kat, you should join us if you're free Monday, we're going to go to the Webster Flea Market, uh, the biggest flea market They're in They're shipping Florida. this Monday. So... Oh, you, you should. I was going to go yesterday, but I, did, I didn't yeah. go. Um, but I will be there next too, so come see me. Perfect. Teresa's very disappointed with the Eagles. I didn't get to watch that game last night. I wish I did. Dal yeah. I was laying down with Dalton. I didn't miss anything. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so next week is Yvonne Thrifty Rich. I was just talking about her making that. And. I don't think she's been on since she hosted for us. So super excited to have her on. And Kate, follow that bug vintage who is like the queen of whatnot. That woman has like two and 300 people in her shows all the time. So if you have whatnot questions and stuff like that, Kate is a really good resource for that. And she will be on. I will have a video out either tomorrow or Thursday on my cat's treasure hunting and Thursday here on the nurse flipper channel with all high dollar sales from the last month. And I appreciate Rod being here, everybody, for staying late with me. And Chris and Alex, thank you. You guys check out their channels. The links, again, if you're watching after, are down in the description. And we are here every Tuesday night. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>